Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Robotech, Ace Pilot by Jeff McClinsky. It is for two to four players, takes about a half an hour to play, and it's for ages 10 and up. In the game Robotech Ace Pilot, you're going to be simply rolling die, Yahtzee style, selecting the die that you want to keep, and then utilizing them to gather pilots from the board below. When you gather your pirate pilots, you're then going to utilize them in either order you would like, or simply a pirate pilot if you only get one, and you'll be utilizing them to attack robots or the bad guys, the Zentradi. In which case, if you eliminate the Zentradi, you're going to score points based on who you eliminate, and those robots will count towards your score at the end of the game. After that, your opponents are also going to take turns in order doing the same thing. After the round is over, you can all, you're going to switch the first player to either the person who gathered the pilot that gives you first player or just to the next player and continue. Now, of course, when you defeat robots, they're all going to be face down to start with except for the top of them and those are not going to replenish until the next player's turn, so you can't dig down deep, which I'll explain in a second when I show you the game itself. But for the most part, you're just trying to do as much damage to the top layer of robots as you possibly can to gather the most amount of points as you can as well. There's a couple of unique types of robots that will give you certain cards, like these upgrade cards here, that will allow you to do different things on your turn. They will let you score points or do additional damage or that good kind of stuff, help you with your, helping you with your die roll. And then other times you'll do damage to robots and not kill them, so you're gonna need to use damage tokens that we've placed on the board as well. See basic idea for the game, score as many as you can before the game ends, and the game will end in one of two different ways, depending if you're playing the short or the long variant. If you're playing the short, as soon as one stack is done, everybody's gonna finish the round up with a turn, and if you're playing the longer game, it's when four stacks empty, in which case the same thing would happen. Tally up your points, whoever has the most wins, let's go and take a look at Robotech Ace Pilot. So here we have Robotech Ace Pilot by Harmony Gold and Japan Anime Games, and I think SMG as well, in which you're going to be uh, setting up for three players in this specific variant. However, you can set it up for two or four as well. And in which case it's gonna be different as to how many robots are gonna go in here. You're actually gonna use this three by three grid here that comes in the box as part of the game itself. Normally all of these and these are gonna start inside this little baggie here, and you're gonna take them all out and put them face down in each of these areas. In a three player game, you're gonna have eight, but you can have less or more depending on the number of players in the game. Then you're going to take all of the top row or all, all of the top guys here and flip them face up just like this. After they're all flipped face up, you're going to know what units are available. And there's two things to really know about units is either A, their uh, points or victory points you'll gain when you destroy them, or B, if you get an upgrade card when defeating them, and C, this one over here is how much damage they take, these little explosion markers. If you don't kill them, you're simply going to use these markers here symbolizing one and two and maybe even three damage for the stronger monsters. When they're eliminated, you'll just simply remove them from the board. Now, to begin the game in a three-player game, you're simply going to choose a starting player, and we'll just have him be over here. And they're going to gain these die here. You're going to then roll up to three times, and when you roll, you can select which ones of these die you would like to keep by looking at the cards over here. Each of the cards do different things. For instance, this one does in a horizontal or vertical row one damage to any of the monsters, uh, or all of the monsters. This one over here, Roy, is going to do two damage in a square, either the bottom left, bottom right, top left, or top right. This one here is Henry Global, he's the commander, and when you pick him, you'll be the next first player, but you can only get uh, his ability, this thing here, once every turn. You can't do it twice in a row. So if you do get him again, it'll simply pass to the next player for first player. But he does four damage to any of these um, spaces in a square. And you can look at him over here. So we do four damage to any of these guys here. Uh, Mir Mir Maria <laughs> is going to do three damage to two targets anywhere here. This is going to kill dorks. Three of them, basically it shows you the types of units it'll destroy, such as these over here or these over here. It does up to three of them as long as they're not in the middle. This is one damage three times to any units or unit. In fact, you could add them all up and do three to one unit. This one over here, Elisa, is going to let you destroy three units that have been damaged, and Max over here does two in the middle and one to all the sides. And those are the ones you're going to be utilizing for the game. I rolled the die once, right now, so now I can go ahead and decide if I want to keep any of these or get rid of any of, the, any of them. And in which case, right now, if I wanted to, I could select these two and these two, and I could get this character here, and I could also get this character here. Those are pretty useful, but maybe I want something better. So I'm going to go ahead and see what I can gather. Now I'll keep this one, this one, and this one, because these are pretty, that's pretty good. It does three damage to two targets. And I'll go ahead and re-roll these guys here. 
ah, that's nice. So if I like what I have, which I actually do like what I have for this, in this instance, I'll keep it. If not, I can go ahead and reroll one more time because you can have a total of three rerolls. So I'll keep these and I'm going to select the cards I want to keep. So Mariah and um, we'll go with Ben here. And those are the two cards that are now locked for this round for that specific player. And I'm going to do damage based on uh, whichever one I want to first. So we'll start with Ben over here and I can destroy uh, any units that are not in the middle that only have the one HP, which are these guys here. And then of course, these walkers here as well. It's just three dorks as they call them. That'll give you two, three, and four points. And I'm gonna place them face down next to the player. And then we'll go ahead and use his ability. Remember, you don't flip these over until the next player's turn. I can do three damage twice. So I'll go ahead and destroy this guy here. He's worth five victory points. And I can do it one more time. Let's go ahead and pick this one here. Now this one doesn't give me any victory points, but because it has a U on it, it will give me an upgrade card. These cards can be utilized on your turn, and when you use them, you can just simply turn them to the side. This says I can reroll any one die at any time. Fairly useful on your turn, correct? But uh, right now I don't need to because I've already rolled my die, so it'll be useful for the rest of the game to go ahead and do so. Then after that, the next player is going to get to go, and he or she will simply roll the dice, and just like Yahtzee once again, select the characters. Now remember, these two are now locked, so we can no longer use these for this round. So for instance, if she ended up rolling, uh, let's say the two targeting symbols, this one and and we'll say this one, then she can go ahead and select these two guys here and then simply make sure to remember to flip over these every single turn when it begins your turn, flip over these so you have a whole new set of monsters to deal with or robots. And then you start doing some damage. Now what's really cool about this is she would choose Rick first and Rick is gonna do one damage to any of the units. So one and two and let's say three. And then Lisa will destroy any damaged units on the board. Now remember, because these all have more than one health and they're all damaged, all three of them are going to be destroyed, thusly giving her seven and three, which is 10 points and giving her an upgrade card. And this one over here is going to be a uh, change any one die to a target or to an arrow. Eh, fairly useful. The last player's turn, simply going to be able to choose between these four. Now remember, you may choose zero, one, or two of these, depending on the die you have and what's available to you. But after they go ahead and select theirs, making sure they flip over their uh, character, the characters that have been removed. And now they got their fresh new ones here. They have these guys here, in which case they would do four damage. And we'll go ahead and select mm, this one here. And then this one says two, one, one, and one. So Maybe it'd be actually better to not destroy this one for four damage. Maybe better to do uh, one and one on here, one over here. This is one, so it destroys it. And this is two, so it destroys that one. Then uses this one to do four damage, selecting maybe this one over here. And then after that, uh, remember if you acquire Henry here and you're not the first player and you didn't acquire him last time, you can actually get this. So this will let you go first the next round. If any other, uh, if this guy is not chosen, it'll simply go to the next player from this one to this one. Um, or if this player requires it next next round, it'll be him. But so basically it's a first player uh, marker that allows you to gain first player for the next round, which is very, very useful. After that, you're going to then start another round, returning these guys back into the pool here so anybody can utilize them. This player will then start. So he went from last to first, which is pretty useful. And the game will continue up until the point where either one of these whole areas is removed, or if you're playing the longer variant, four of these. After that, whoever has the most victory points face down in front of him or her is going to win the game Robotech Ace Pilot. There's one additional little thing to mention too, other than the fact that the characters can have anywhere from one to four, four health. There's also a boss character that's somewhere in here. I don't know exactly where he is, but either way, the only way to defeat that boss character is with Rick and you're gonna to need to lay down some damage on it first. And then with Rick, you'll actually have to do the killing blow, which will give you a ton of victory points. But otherwise, I think get the game Robotech Ace Pilot. All right, let's come up and talk about it. All right, so caveats for Robotech Ace Pilot. And the first thing is, remember that the boss, I actually have him here now for you. He's got his uh, nine victory points and he has five HP. There are some changes in the rules as to how they function based on the characters that are targeting him. And also Rick is always gonna be the one that needs to defeat it. So make sure you use your combos correctly to destroy the boss. He's worth a lot of points, which is pretty useful, even though he may or may not be in the game that you're specifically playing, based on A, the number of players, and B, whether or not he even gets put on the grid. Uh, there's also some cool combinations. Like I showed you before, Lisa and Rick are a, a really cool combo because you can use him to do one damage to the targets that have more than one health and then follow it up with her to do uh, 
to kill three units that are damaged, thusly killing any three units on the entire board. Now that's not always the best case, sometimes it might be better to just do a bunch of damage everywhere, or targeting specific units for three here, three here, two here, it just really depends on what's available. Another thing is to remember, whenever, you're, whenever it's your turn, make sure you flip over all the cards, all the tokens that are face down, that is what you're gonna be utilizing to a defeat during your turn. Anything under the first robot, you're not going to be able to defeat. That's why they stay face down. But on the next player's turn, they simply flip them up. It was a little bit challenging for me to remember that for some reason. I don't really know why, and maybe you won't have the same problem. Another thing to note is to remember that Henry allows you to gain the first player marker. Being first is very, very useful because the characters will dissipate as players acquire them on their turn. Thusly, being able to have the first option is always the best. But that comes at a cost because this character doesn't do as much as the rest of them. It does simply four damage in a square any of the any, in any of those areas just one time, uh, which is cool. Uh, this one over here is the upgrade cards. They do a bunch of different things. In fact, I'll read a couple of them to you. You can inflict a damage anywhere except for the center square when you use this card, and that's once around. Uh, remove any two face-up tokens from play, swapping positions, uh, swap positions of a face-down token with a face-up. So if there's a space that it, has already been defeated, you can actually flip them, those over and then simply fight another one, which could give you a leg up. And there's uh, other ones that let you change die symbols with one to another. Uh, there are certain die symbols like the targeting symbol here, which is gonna score you, or it's gonna be more, more likely to be rolled, as well as the arrow symbol. The other ones are a little less likely to be rolled in the game. Game. And that's pretty much it. The game's fun. It's got some great artwork. If you're a Robotech fan, this is a game I would highly suggest you take a look at because it's a, it's, a, it's really, really enjoyable. It's really simple, has a Yahtzee style mechanic, but it's a little different too because you're going to be using this grid here that actually comes in the box, which is nice as well. I don't see a lot of games doing stuff like this, incorporating the uh, inserts of a box as being utilized in the game. Now, there are quite a few, but just not a huge amount as well. Being able to incorporate that kind of stuff is really fun and really unique and interesting as well. I had a lot of fun playing this one. The only two things I had to say is one, of course, remember that the boss's stuff is in the rule book and don't forget to check that out because otherwise you'll just think he's a basic five, five, five uh, hit point unit and that's not the case. And then of course, remembering to flip over those tiles on your turn, but otherwise really fun. If you're a Yahtzee fan, you're gonna enjoy this. If you like a competitive variant of a Yahtzee style game, this is one you also should check out. And of course you Robotech fans out there already know that uh, this is gonna be one for you definitely to take a look at. Overall, a positive experience, a light filler style game, something you could play more than once if you'd like to. Definitely one I would suggest you checking out. Robotech, down in the description by Japan Anime Games. Had a lot of fun with this one. I think you guys will too.